Now, let's talk about Docker Build 3.0. So Docker Build 3.0, at first, if we look at that Docker file, we're like, wait a minute, that's exactly the same as Docker file 2.0, right? So what's the difference? Well, the difference um, is going to be in the back end. The front end remains mostly the same. And by mostly the same, I mean that it's 100% backward compatible. So any old Docker file will still work with the new Docker builder, but the back end is completely different. Um, the, the old back end, you know, the old school Docker build uh, was basically doing like, uh, uh, you know, Docker run, execute one command, Docker commit, you get a new image. Then you take that image, run the next command, commit, you get a new image, etc., etc. Imagine a little bit like playing a video game where each line of the Docker file is one level and you save the game after each level so that if you mess up, you can always restore uh, your, your game at a previous point. Um, so that was the, the, the big advantage of Docker files, like these caching semantics. Um, so that was great but it had some limitations uh, in particular when you start working with multi-arch builds and so that's why we needed that docker build 3.0 one more time that's that's not like a real uh, version numbering um but that's how I, I that's how i number it and how i call it so we changed the back end uh to to use something called build kit uh, multiple reasons uh, first, uh, efficiency. Um, we will see that there are many optimizations uh, in BuildKit. Um, second thing is that BuildKit uh, doesn't require the Docker engine anymore. Docker build traditionally requires to run the Docker engine, and some folks have uh, strong opinions about that. So BuildKit doesn't rely on the Docker engine anymore. Um, and that makes it suited uh, to orchestration systems. So for instance, when you have a Kubernetes cluster and you want to build images in that Kubernetes cluster, uh, BuildKit is going to be pretty convenient for that. One thing that BuildKit will give us is also, I would say, first-class support for multi-architecture builds and cross-builds, which is going to help us if you want to run on uh, Raspberry Pis, uh, but also on uh, ARM servers like the Graviton on AWS or Ampere, Ampere, I don't know how to pronounce it, Ampere on, um, on Oracle, uh, or the new Apple Silicon M1 and M2 CPUs. So more on that in a, in a, in a little while. So the, the, the big selling points of BuildKit, like first, like full compatibility, you don't need to rewrite or even adapt your Docker files. Um, there is parallelism. Um, I will show some demos of that. There is also a better handling of the build context. So if you don't know what the build context is, that might sound a little bit confusing. So I'm going to show you an example as well. Um, as I was telling you, like the ability to build in Kubernetes clusters, um, support for multiple architectures, uh, and future proof, that means that uh, BuildKit gives us ways to extend the build process so that new features uh, can be introduced as well. Um, the, the output format will be pretty much the same. So, you know, when, when you build with uh, the old school Docker build or the new age Docker build, at the end, you still get a, a regular Docker image. Uh, no, no difference there. Uh, so that that doesn't change you, you so you you can still uh, use them as oci images now uh one thing you know when when you change something as important as the container image builder you might be worried about is this going to break stuff or has this been extensively tested um build kit is not really new i remember like when i when i was still working at docker in 2017 we already had some beta builds of build kit the team was already working on that so build kit is not new um if ever since 2018 it was possible to kind of 
opt-in, like enable build kit with an environment variable. And since I think 2020, uh, I'm not sure exactly when, if it's 2020 or 2021, but uh, nonetheless, um, the build kit became the default builder if you're using Docker desktop on Windows on, or on a Mac. So um, just to see the difference, so I have some little demos here. Um, so here is a Docker file. Uh, and in this Docker file, what are we doing is that um, it's a little uh, example of the, the kind of image that we might want to use in a CI pipeline. And so for whatever reason, um, in this Docker file, I need to have kubectl and Terraform and the Docker CLI. Let me put like this so that we can have everything on screen. Perfect. So I need to have yeah the Docker CLI, kubectl, Terraform uh, in a single image. So the classic approach would be you know like from Alpine or Ubuntu or whatever, and then you install the Docker CLI, you install kubectl, you install Terraform. Here we do that slightly differently. As you can see, we have four stages. Um, so one, two, three, four. Um, first, first stage, we get the Docker CLI. See, we download that binary here. Second stage, we get kubectl. Same thing, we download the binary. Uh, third stage, we download Terraform. And in the fourth stage, we put everything together. So let's compare now. Um, so if I build without build kit, um, so you can see like docker build dash dash no cache. Um, let's go. And uh, what's happening now? Okay, there you go. Um, so you can see it's doing the, the Docker file, you know, like as a single uh, linear process, you know, it's in one line, first line, second line, third line, etc. You can see step nine out of 22, 10 out of 22. It's doing that like, yeah, very linear process. Uh, no parallelism. There we go. Terraform. almost there and now we're putting everything together and there we go that took 46 seconds all right now same build uh, but with build kit so you can see the only difference uh, between these two files is just that we set that environment variable docker build kit 0 or docker build kit 1 so now uh, build with build kit the first thing that you can see is that it looks different. We have some blue colors and dark gray. And you know, if you're if you're not sure if this is using build kit or not, that's the first uh, clear sign. If you see some blue, like you know, this uh, what is this navy blue or whatever, like blue output like this, you know that this is using build kit. Um, and you can see that without build kit. Um, we're kind of seeing the whole output. So this is very verbose, like pages and pages. And here we have something a little bit more compact and we have some timing information on the right. And we see that in total, it took uh, 15 seconds instead of what, 45. Um, so that's like three times faster. It's kind of checks out because um, we have like these three stages that each download something and now we're executing them in parallel instead of uh, executing them uh, sequentially. Because if you look at that Docker file, um, you know, if you think in terms of uh, ingredients in a way, to build that stage, I need an ingredient from that stage and from that stage and from that stage. Uh, it's a little bit like when you cook lasagna, you know, you have the, you have the dough and then you have maybe the, uh, the uh, tomato and, and meat thing, and then you have some white sauce with whatever, uh, you can prepare these things uh, in parallel. You know, instead of uh, doing the kitchen recipe, everything in order, uh, you, you can stop um, cooking something and when it's cooking, you can work on something else. That's what BuildKit is doing. Okay, so first, 
uh, we have this parallelism and it doesn't look like much, but on some images, the difference is going to be uh, even bigger than that, especially on complex real world images. Yeah, maybe not on, on small and simple and simple microservices, but if you have, let's say, some uh, application based on uh, a single page uh, app, uh, and you have some uh, some CSS and some JavaScript and some other JavaScript somewhere else, and you take everything together and like compile it and minimize it and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, that's a scenario where you can save a lot of time with a multi-stage build.